iSARMS.com, the number one place to learn about SARMS online. Welcome everyone, Dylan Jamelli here today with a brand new video for you. What I want to talk to you about today are the different symptoms for high and low estrogen in males. Okay, and one of the hardest things to control when you're using tests, steroids, or when you're on TRT is estrogen. Now TRT is easy, more easily controllable because you should be using a very low dose of testosterone. It's really difficult to control estrogen if you're overweight or if you have a high BMI count. And this is all the more reason that you should be exercising more frequently if you're not already as it is. Now, a lot of times men are going to report that their TRT started out great only for it to stop working a few months in. And doctors that are more versed in TRT, which unfortunately there's far more that are not than are, but that's a different topic, they'll likely check your estrogen levels and, and see if that is part of the problem, if they have any grasp on anything whatsoever. Now, a lot of times doctors are going to put you on a Rimidex when you're on TRT. I'm not a fan of a Rimidex. The reasoning is because it's not nearly as strong as aromacin. Now, mind you, some people are very, very prone to gyno and some people are not at all. And the people that are not at all, sometimes aromacin can be too much for them. And then I certainly say go with a Rimidex. But for most, aromacin is going to be the choice. You don't want to tank your estrogen levels either. There's a fine line. You don't want them too high, but you don't want them too low. If you go too low, you're going to have a lot of problems too, and you're not going to be gaining any muscle or anything of the sort on top of it. So the goal here is to have a nice proper balance within your levels, to be in a good range where you feel good and you look good and you're not having any problems, obviously. So let me just jump in because, and, and part of the problem here too that a lot of people go with is there's a lot of similarities on certain um, types of negative like problems that can occur when you have high or low estrogen. A lot of them are similar. So you have to be careful going on assumption at times. That's why blood work is imperative to be, to be monitoring throughout. Um, let's take a look at some of the low estrogen levels. The fatigue is one of the things that could be very, very bad and, and it will hit you quite hard. You're going to feel like a lot of lethargy during the day. You're going to feel tired and you're going to be unmotivated. You might sleep too much and sleep too often. That's another thing that could occur and that's called hypersomnia as opposed to insomnia. Um, you might have strong erections, but then again, you might have some limited sensitivity. So you might not feel much of anything, which obviously is not cool. Uh, nothing that I would want to deal with. Um, you could have a loss of erections as well, and that's really crossing the line, and it's something I would not ever want to deal with. Um, you could have osteoporosis issues that could occur with low estrogen symptoms. You could have a lot of joint pain from drying out so much, and you know, being so dried out without any estrogen whatsoever, that can cause some severe pain in the joints and problems. You could have some eye fatigue. Um, because you're not getting adequate sleep, you know, dark circles around your eyes, loss of libido as we're talking about. It's just, it's a terrible thing. You could have difficulty retaining water, so you could be frequently urinating, and you might have some anxiety, depression, and high irritability levels. Now, in comparison, let's take a look at high estrogen symptoms. You might have some soft erections, again, or an inability to actually maintain one. You will have some water retention. It will be, you know, a lot less frequent urinating going on and you're going to have some excessive sweating. You could have an increase in blood pressure um, and that's due to the water retention. There could be some insomnia, so you might have trouble sleeping. So there you see the converse of each other. One, you know, you could have the sleeping too much and too often and then on another you could have the insomnia and not being able to sleep at all. You could have some hot flushing, some flushing around your face, your, you know, or your ears. You might have some night sweats that occur, and that's from estradiol lowering, causing loss of water retention. You might have some bloating, which could lead to some brain fog, um, kind of like you you feel like your head's almost in a bubble, and your testicles might actually seem smaller than usual. So, as you can kind of see, when you're when estrogen isn't managed correctly, it can wreak some serious havoc on a male body. You know. 
I've experienced both. I tend to be more estrogen sensitive. So I really know what it's like more so to have the elevated side and, and you know what comes along with it. And what I found and what everybody else needs to find is you just need to listen to your body. Okay, if your body's telling you something's wrong, go get the blood work done, confirm it, and then treat it. Don't do guesswork. Don't have this hypothesis in your head, well, I have this symptom, so this is what it's got to be, so let's treat it. Because here's what could happen. You might think something and be wrong, and then you'll treat the wrong symptom. Then you treat the wrong symptom, and you could accidentally and conversely make the other symptom that you actually have worse and that's why that I am so, so like, boom, boom, boom. Every time somebody asks me, where's your blood work? Well, I don't have any because this, this, and this. Yeah, well, do you realize that this symptom is the same as having high or low? Do you have this, this, and this? And then we go through this big, long ordeal and finally come to the conclusion, well, I best get some blood work done. So, you know, this is why I say you get pre-cycle mid-cycle and post-cycle blood work done. Why? You need a baseline to start, okay? If you don't have a baseline blood panel, how on earth are you gonna know how anything affected you? How are you gonna know what your test levels were before you started your estrogen levels, etc.? You don't. And that is just a recipe for disaster. If you don't get a mid-cycle, what if something's affecting you internally that you're not even aware of yet that could make it so much worse later that it's so difficult to treat, or etc.? Estrogen being one of those things because sometimes it won't hit you until just out of nowhere when you could have prevented it off the jump. And obviously, post-cycle, you want to know if you're recovering properly. So here's some quick tests you can perform at home alone. One is the ring finger test. So if you wear a ring and you notice it feeling a little tighter, then that means that you're likely bloating and holding water and that could possibly mean that you have excess estrogen. Weight. If your weight has gone up, especially in the morning, you likely have some water retention going on. That could be another one. And fatigue. This is one of the worst. You know, when, when your E2 levels get really, really high, you know, you will feel shot like you absolutely cannot function. I mean, you'll be tired all day long, no matter how much you sleep, you'll have no motivation, you won't be able to do a damn thing. You got to get blood work done immediately when you start having symptoms, find out the problem, assess the situation, treat it, and move on. It's imperative. And I see too many people going, oh, well, I can, I can get by with it. You're not gonna get by with anything. What you're gonna do is get by with more bullshit side effects that you gotta deal with and longer extended problems. So, you know, ultimately it's up to you. Like I always say, you have to make your own decisions and choices and hopefully they're for the best. So, Dylan Jamelli, signing off. iSarms.com, the number one.